are some absolutely savage efforts in a bike race, a road race, a crit, a gravel race. And I want to talk about zones. I know this sounds boring, but 150% plus FTP for your training. This is something that I thought about when I was getting shellacked and trying to turn the corner and getting race ready. I'm Brendan Hausler with Evoke Bike. So today we're gonna to dive into really the basic is make sure you're getting time above 150% of your FTP if you plan to go race. That really, really hard effort, which is somewhat confusing based on the type of zones that we use. When I've used classic zones for explaining things to athletes a lot of times, I think the difference between threshold, VO2 max, and anaerobic capacity, having those separated, I don't separate sweet spot and FTP. I wasn't separating things like WKO did into FRC, Pmax, it was getting, I thought, a little too granular, but I'm actually changing my tune because you could have a workout where you get, quote unquote, 19 minutes of anaerobic time, but it might not have any effort over 140% FTP. That, I do not believe, is hard enough training for going to a bike race. And I can show you a ton of different files here. I went back and looked at a ton of different races. It's the really hard 30 to 90 second repeated efforts. If you use WKO, and I'm gonna show you how to set this up in something free like Strava, so don't worry if you don't. But what's the FRC range? If you look through a bunch of different athletes, it's about 150% FTP to 235, 250%. I'm not really as concerned with the upper level here, but when we look at the anaerobic range, on classic zones, it's just 120% plus. So whether you're going 125% or 200%, it counts the same amount of time. That can be so deceiving when we look at the training sessions that we're doing to prepare for specific races. I was looking at Capital Region and I looked back at how did that race unfold because the course, actually Raleigh Weaver, who was on the podcast after I posted on Stravi says, this looks brutal. And it is. There are a couple just full gas climbs between three to five minutes that are super hard. And if you saw my breakdown, you you know what I'm talking about. Strava, kudos to them. They have a 120 to 150% zone. And then what I think they call neuromuscular is 150% plus. Most training peaks accounts that I look through with athletes that set up their own one have it just set as 120% plus till the end. It's just not granular enough. How much time do we need to train this in a training session? How do I know what I'm supposed to go do? So if you use something like Optimize Intervals, they put time and zone for a true, true FRC or what you want to call anaerobic workout at between four to 10 minutes. Start down at the lower level around four minutes and work up to 12 minutes. So I said, let me look at some hard races. Is this an accurate number to train and go after? Hardest races that I picked out, Capital Region had nine minutes at FRC. Amateur Nationals had seven minutes. And that's I got dropped in that race, so it was definitely going to be probably nine plus, 10, 11. Gravel World, so a long gravel race, had 17. That race was insane. Uh, I've made a podcast on that when I came in fifth. And just the smashing was absolutely unreal. One of the hardest days on the bike I've ever done. Uh, double crit day, I did nine and a half minutes of FRC. Grinder Nationals earlier this year, eight minutes. So here's the thing though. On the flip side, I've gone off for a KOM hard day and had nine minutes anaerobic. So I could be telling myself, oh, I'm getting, this is great. I'm doing the efforts ready for a race. That is not hard enough smashing. And now it obviously depends on the KOMs you go for. And we could go a million different ways with this. But it was less than two and a half minutes of FRC. So when I go back here and I look at Capital Region again, the anaerobic time was 27 minutes and 40 seconds and the VO2 max time was 16 minutes. Really broken down, it's 37 minutes of that 120 to 150 and over nine of the FRC. So that's an important thing to realize when I go train. I can't just go do 140%. I need to have nine minutes over... I think 650 watts. <laughs> That's like doing 18 30 second full gas efforts. It's a lot of hard smashing. Now, when I look at other ones, Strava, they do a good job of breaking this down. They have VO2 max, 
anaerobic and neuromuscular. I've done this breaking away effort where I've talked about this in a different podcast. It's like 140, 130, 120. It's a great VO2 max workout. But when you do it, if you do classic zones, it says you have over eight minutes of anaerobic time and it's 12 minutes of VO2 max. When you get more granular and use something like WKO or Strava, it's gonna say you have 21 minutes of VO2 max time and less than two minutes of anaerobic or FRC work. So just seeing that difference, I'm obviously hypersensitive to super smashing, but we are in the day and time when a lot of people online, and I'm not knocking them, I just think the message can be confusing, especially to newer riders. Aerobic work, zone two work is gold. I want that to be the mega focus of your training. But when people then say, oh, you just have to go see God or just go hard every once in a while, I don't think that's enough training at that uh, intensity. The other thing that we need to remember, sometimes these people that we look up to and we listen to, I think they forget that they work with professional athletes that race a lot. A lot of these pros are training 20 to 25 hours a week. That is not realistic for many amateurs. So the difference in training hours affects what they do in terms of percentages, in terms of how often they go hard. Of you know, They see these athletes riding at endurance pace more often because they're actually doing it more often. They're doing it almost every day. So just be really cognizant. Don't let ourselves get deceived when we look at what we have to do to get ready for the actual races. You need some banger sessions before the big race. And that we could go on a whole other topic of a video. If you, I think it's important to have a races, important races that are important to you. If you have an a race and you're not racing before that, it's really hard to make that the a race. You need to go race to be ready for races. Just make sure we split up what is truly truly going hard and one of the reasons i think it's really hard not only just to have the mental capacity of remembering how hard really hard is going that the muscles the musculature if you don't actually push through when you go and you've been smashing i mean look at any road race file look at any crit file there's tons of full gas look at the beginning of a gravel race even if it's 100 miles if you don't do those hard efforts when you get two and a half hours in that's when people start getting these cramps And it's just the muscle saying, hey, I've had enough. So I've belabored the point. Go hard. Track how often you're going hard. Have the best 2024 and do a proper base season. And I'm going to go in on some other videos of what I think you could do for base season if you had to stay inside the entire winter, which I did a lot of that in Rochester. And also, I'm going to make some room for a few more athletes. I had one person drop off. And I'm going to make room for a couple more spots. So if you're looking to get a coach, hit me up. Let's crush 2024. I'm stoked. Let's get it.